Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're back out at Doulis Den. It's a beautiful day. Uh, we're one day short of official fall, but we're running in the low 60s for high temperatures today. And we were down to about 32 last night, so you can definitely feel fall in the air, which is a great time of year. Now I'm out here today with Petersoli's Charles Moore dueling pistol. Now this of course was built by Petersoli in Italy. It was imported for me by the Italian Firearms Group. The Italian Firearms Group is a marketing outfit that handles a lot of Italian firearms makers and importing their guns into America. Everything from um, high power African game double rifles to muzzleloaders. And my uh, muzzleloader contact the Petersoli rep is a fellow named Justin, and he got this brought into the country from Petersoli just for me. And he's been waiting a long time to see a video on it. So today I'm going to make his wish come true. So, Justin, this is for you. Charles Moore was a British gunsmith. He was born in 1791, and he was active really in the first half of the 19th century. And this gun by Petersoli is a copy of a Charles Moore flintlock dueling pistol from the very early 1820s. And he, he opened his shop as a master gunsmith in 1821. And this gun would have been very close to that period of time. So it's not an 18th century gun. Now, I actually got this gun for a specific purpose. I wanted to compete with it in the flintlock pistol matches at the Fort Robodeau Rifle Frolic this year in 2020. And just like so many things this year, the Fort Robodeau event has been coroned out of existence for a year. So this was gonna make its debut in about two weeks at the, uh, at the Fort Robodeau event, but instead, I'm gonna give you all the first look at it. So I hope you enjoy it. Well, these two pistols are a pair of dueling pistols made by Charles Moore in the early 1820s. And they are very typical of, uh, of his work. And they are quite fine. So you can compare these pistols to Petersoli's Charles Moore pistol, which you see right here. And you'll notice a few differences, but uh, overall I think the spirit of the Charles Moore guns are there. So Petrosoli's Charles Moore flintlock pistol is a 45 caliber pistol and it loads with patched round balls. It's, it's got uh, a relatively fast twist rifling. I would say it's about one in 30. Um, it's got an 11 inch barrel, which is, is fairly long. It's got a half stock and, and Charles Moore's pistols were mostly made with half stock. He was, he was quite a fan of that. Uh, so this is quite typical. In fact, this really only disagrees in a couple of particulars from original Charles Moore pistols I've seen. One, one is that it does not have a waterproof pan. Uh, most of the ones I've seen, his flintlocks had a waterproof pan, which was quite common in the 1820s. And I've seen a number of his pistols that have ebony nose caps, not steel nose caps. Uh, but really, it very much is in the spirit of a Charles Moore dueling pistol. Now, this gun has uh, one particularly interesting facility, which is the trigger is a set trigger. Pull it forward, and hopefully you heard that click and it'll set. And once it's set, the gun is empty, but I just want to show you, just a touch sets it off. However, it can be fired unset. So uh, that makes it kind of interesting. You know, like in the 18th century, that would have been considered fairly unsporting for a dueling pistol. Most dueling pistols uh, until late in the 18th century were smooth bore and putting a, uh, a hair trigger and, and good sights on it 
uh, that would have been considered kind of like wanting to commit murder, you know? It, uh, just not done, old man. So, so anyway, this, these later pistols are a little bit different. People obviously had a different attitude by the time they get to this time. Uh, so, changes I've made. You can see this rear sight. Uh, the original sight was about twice as high and consequently the gun shot extremely high. Uh, and there was really nothing I could do about it. So I decided to replace the sight. I put an Allentown style rifle sight on it, which is quite low. These dovetails are very thin. Uh, they are only about a quarter of an inch, so it's kind of hard to work with. But that sight's a much better fit, and then I filed the front sight to fit. Okay, now I'm going to tell you something about shooting these flintlock pistols that may not be intuitive. Particularly if you're a modern handgun shooter, and, and I shoot a lot of modern handguns. Now on most modern handguns, you want a grip that puts your finger, your index finger, trigger finger, in line with your arm. Right straight down your wrist, straight down your forearm. Well, if you try that with the Charles Moore pistol, what happens is you have quite a reach for the trigger. And that long 11 inch barrel feels very overbalanced and it's very difficult to hold that steady. Very difficult. And it's very easy with that set trigger to set it off when you're not ready. Uh, because it's very easy to touch it accidentally while you're shaking that gun around. The way most of these flintlock pistols were made to be shot is actually quite different from a modern pistol. What you want to do is you want to choke up on that curve. Right, so instead of holding it down here, you want to hold it up here. Okay, so instead of the pistol being in line with your wrist, you're really dropping it down from your wrist. All right, so your wrist is not in line with the pistol at all. Oh. Uh, which is a little bit harder for instinctively shooting it. But once you get the hang of it, they shoot quite well. And if you don't hold it like that, it's a lot harder, especially with a long barrel pistol that has a fairly long reach. Now you can make them so they're shorter, like I've got a Queen Anne pistol that holds very well like this, but it has a much tighter grip. So anyway, if you get this pistol, I recommend that you choke up on it. And if you do, you'll do a lot better. Okay, so here's an original British Sea Service pistol. And if you take a look at the way the grip is angled away from the barrel, you can see that it forces you to hold it with that choked up hold that I'm talking about. That works just fine. Now, the Charles Moore has a curved plow handle type of grip that makes you think you can hold it more in line with the barrel. But to be honest with you, you got to hold it the same way you would hold the Sea Service pistol. And if you do, you'd be in good shape. Okay, it's time to load up. Now, I've got the pistol on a loading stand. This is really the safest way, and pretty much the only safe way, to load these single-shot pistols. Otherwise, you're waving them all over the place while you're trying to get them loaded. That's not good. Now, the only problem I've got is I don't have a commercial source for loading stands. You can see this is a homemade job. Uh, I'm sure there must be some commercial ones out there that are decent. And if any of you know of them and can point me to them, I would really appreciate it. But in the meantime, I've got this homemade one. So I'm going to be loading this up with 30 grains of 3FG Swiss powder. So we'll get the measure first. All right, so powder. Make sure we're empty. Then I'm going to do a 0 0.018 inch thick pillow ticking patch. I'm using 440 swage Hornady balls. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna use a short starter and then a synthetic ramrod to seat this. So first, short starter. Ramrod it down. And we're all set now except for priming. I'm gonna prime with 4F powder 
when I'm at the line. Well, Evil Roy thinks I've been besmirching his honor for many years. And he's challenged me to a duel to try to set things right. So I'm going to have to take the Pedersoli Charles Moore dueling pistol. And see if we can settle this like gentlemen. So I'm priming with 4FG powder. I'm going to set the trigger. And Evil Roy is going to be history, I'm afraid. Well, I just winged him, but honor is satisfied. <laughs> well, let's take on old Roy again, see if I can get a little bit of a better hit on him. There you go. Drilled him dead center. That's what we want to see. All right, I've got a honeydew melon out there about, uh, oh, about 17 yards away. And we're going to see if we can make some melon balls out of it with the Pedersoli Charles Moore pistol. You know, I, I forgot to mention before when I was telling you that trick about choking up on the grip. Uh, I figured that out from watching a friend of mine, Ed Zaransky, shoot this pistol when I was practicing with it at an event uh, that didn't happen to have a pistol match. And I watched Ed shoot it and I thought, man, that's, I'm an idiot, that, that's how so many of them were shot. And I'm trying to do it the modern way. So thank you, Ed, for helping me to figure that out. Now let's go see if we can, uh, we can bang that honeydew. them. <laughs> well, let's finish up with the duelist view of the Pedersoli Charles Moore pistol. Well, as always, if you like this video, and I sure hope you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It uh, will help my future videos come up in your queue. And if you like the video and you're not a subscriber to the channel, by all means subscribe. We'd love to have you. We don't want you to miss a single good thing. We've got a lot of interesting stuff coming up. And um, I would just hate to have you miss it. So if you're a subscriber and you want to help support the channel, you can do that on Patreon. Or you can go to my website, MikeBellevue.com. And buy a t-shirt at the Teespring store that helps to fund uh, all of our efforts on the website. And until I see you again next week, keep on making smoke. Bye.